Wow, that was quite an introduction. You read it just the way I wrote it. That's awesome. Gotta love that. You know, uh, it is so nice to be here. I, I was mingling back there. And, you know, sometimes you start to think you, everybody knows who you are. You're a big, uh, you know, big talk show, big congressman and stuff. Somebody comes up to me back there and said, I know you. And I thought for a second, well, I'm going to let this go. Um, weren't you on the radio for a while? And I said, yeah, yeah. And you wrote a book about, uh, about federalism? Yeah, yeah. And it, oh, you're Alexander's friend. Yeah, that's what they said. <laughs> so it's good to be known in the community, right? Um, I tell you, I cannot be more happy than to be here um, and working hard for your next representative. This guy is a superstar, I want to tell you right here. Alexander is exactly the type of person that 67 needs because he is the fellow that's going to enact policies that moves all Americans, all Minnesotans, from dependence to independence. And that is the American dream. The Democrats have been taking groups for granted for decades, thinking, don't worry, I'll keep you right where you are, but I'll keep you happy right where you are. That's not the American dream. The American dream is, I want to go higher. I want a rising tide that lifts all boats. I want to learn that career technical skill, be a millwright or, or a plumber or an operating engineer. You know, the late great Spencer Tracy, the actor, was asked once how it felt to be so important as an actor. And he paused for a moment in the good old days and said, important? Actors aren't important. Plumbers are important. <laughs> and it's true. And I was talking to a lawyer the other day whose plumber came over and he, he's tinkering down below his sink for a while and the plumber gets done 20 minutes later and he says, that'll be 500 bucks. And the lawyer says, 500 bucks? That's more than I charge as a lawyer. And the plumber stops for a second and says, that was more than I charged when I was a lawyer too. <laughs> These are the jobs of the 21st century. Part of that juvenile justice reform bill that I authored made certain that young juveniles who, who were convicted of what is called a status crime. You know what a status crime is? A status crime is something that wouldn't be a crime when you were an adult. And trust me, as a kid, I committed a lot of them. Yeah. Like, uh, I think they're called kegers. Uh, drinking underage, running away from home for a day or two. Those are called status crimes. We were putting those kids in with hardened criminals in jail. My bill, the juvenile justice reform, did a couple of things. It made certain that wasn't going to happen. And two, it said instead of that form of incarceration, let's teach them a trade. Not, not necessarily a four-year liberal arts degree. You know, after $100,000 later, you're waiting on tables at Starbucks. That's not the future. Teach them how to be a millwright, as I say, an, an operating engineer, a plumber, someone that can make and build America. That's what Alexander wants to do. And when it comes to getting that done, it doesn't start in higher education. It starts in K through 12. It starts with homeschoolers. It starts with people that want choice in education, and that's what we intend to provide them right here in 67 with your new representative. And I'll tell you something else. If, if our leaders, and I use that term loosely, if our leaders don't open, open up our schools this fall, what we've done to our kids with the overreaching lockdowns, when primarily this disease was a threat to the elderly and people with comorbidities, there's not been one death in Minnesota from 0 to 18. We know because of their, I'm not going to get into the medicine of it, but I think they're called ACE2 receptors, the kids aren't as susceptible. But what we've done by taking them out of school, socially isolating them. You know, I was talking about criminal justice reform. You know when we do the most hardened prisoners? We put them in solitary confinement. That's what we've done to our children. In fourth grade, at a formative age, they need to get back to school this fall. And if these leaders don't reopen those schools with reasonable precautions, then you know what? Every single person at this meeting ought to have their money back, a property tax rebate, so they can go out and buy the kind of education they want for their children. The other side talks a good game about choice. They love to talk about choice when it comes to aborting uh, young, youngsters in, in, in the inner city. They love choice then, but when you talk about choice in education, they say, oh, no, no, the, the, the teachers union won't let us do that. We can't have choice in education. We need choice in education. We need options, and Alexander's going to provide those for you in St. Paul. Look, we're, we're at an inflection point here. I mentioned a lot of policy initiatives right there. 
None of those is possible without public safety. When we tell law enforcement authorities with the problems they have that need to be fixed, but when we tell them all to stand down, it's not the couple in Wyzetta who's threatened. It's not the couple down at the St. Croix who's threatened. It's people in St. Paul and Minneapolis 1,500 buildings burned or damaged. I've toured many of them. An Ethiopian restaurant, a cafe on the DuPont and Broadway in North Minneapolis, a Hmong store on University. Their lives are ruined because of what's happened. If this government doesn't provide us with some semblance of safety and public order, none of these other choices are possible. So we gotta get our priorities right. We have to make certain a rising tide lifts all boats in our community, and most importantly this fall, we have to elect Alexander as your next representative. Thank you all very much.